everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Um, you all may know this or you may not know this, but if my name looks slightly familiar, it's because you all should have the book that I wrote that published two weeks ago. Very thrilling. Uh, thanks. So my book is all about the history of teenage girls and activism. So I know I'm in very comfortable welcoming space right now. But the first thing I wanted to ask both of you is how you each got started in activism and whether there was a particular issue or cause that brought you into it that made you feel like I really want to make a difference here. For me, I got started in activism in 10th grade, which is my sophomore year, and what really um, got me started in my fight for sexual and reproductive health and justice is learning that there is 23 million girls that drop out of school every single year because of lack of period product access and also a much larger population of girls that just drop out of school because of lack of education access in general. Yeah. So I think that's what really got me started. Thank you, much for, thank you so much for saying, Tria. And I think for me, I think I first got involved in activism in my sophomore year of high school. And so during my sophomore year of high school, I remember taking classes like AP Physics and AP Chem and noticing that like there was very few females, like girls in my class, and even fewer black women. Like I remember being like one of one of the only two, one of one of the only two black women in my classes. Mind you, this is at a predominantly African American and Latinx school. So for like us to only have two black women in our AP um, STEM classes was very concerning to me. And like that's how I first wanted to like get involved in activism because I wanted to see more women and more women of color, even more in STEM fields. And I wanted like there to be more access for us in STEM opportunities. And I think I even got even further in activism after the COVID-19 pandemic and witnessing like how like there are limited resources available to women and how like a lot of like mortality rates rose for women during the COVID pa pandemic and like just wanting to advocate for more women in STEM and women in healthcare. That's amazing. Thanks so much for sharing. I think one of the things that was striking to me writing this book and talking to so many incredible young women and women who were activists as young people is that obviously, and this room is a testament to that, it's so powerful to be among your peers, to learn from people your own age, to do collective action with other young women. But I also think mentorship and the example of people older than us is so helpful because it's the thing that gives us perspective. So I'm wondering in both of your lives and in the activism that you do, what role do you think mentorship plays in helping girls kind of understand what's possible? I think mentorship and access to support is very important in the role of activism. I think. Um, it's very important to seek out help and support, especially as high school activists, that's when I first started. Um, it's very important to have a support system. I remember when I first became involved in leadership and um, my role with Girl Up, I seeked out some help from youth leaders in my community and they taught me the basics of being a leader and leading meetings and organizing fundraisers and initiatives. And I feel like those meetings really kind of shaped who I am today, even though they were very, a long time ago and very short and very sweet, but um, I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am today without those meetings. And I feel like every leader in this room today should never be ashamed to seek out support and help and mentorship because it's very important and you will be a much better leader if you do seek out the support of other powerful women in the room. For sure, and we know like activism can be lonely. I mean, this room is an amazing community and hopefully that exists you know, in this country and around the world, but sometimes it can feel really isolating to be a person speaking up. And for you? I think um, mentorship, mentorship is very important and I think that's like one of the main reasons why I really love Girl Up because you're surrounded by like a community of like powerful, positive people. Like between now and yesterday, I can say I've made about like 50 new people, 50 new best friends just from interacting and hearing the amazing things that everyone here, every girl here is doing. And I think Girl Up is just, I, Girl Up is just an amazing environment that provides that mentorship and I think it's very important just to have that one person say, oh, I'm proud of you, or I believe in you can go a long way. And I think that's what Girl Up does. Yeah, incredible. I totally agree. And I think that the history of girls and activism is a testament to that. That's how things happen. That's how change happens. But the other side of things is that it can be a lot of pressure to be a young activist. And burnout is real. Every single person in this room knows that the mental health challenges of trying to take on systemic problems that have been issues for centuries, but have been left for this generation to deal with, that's a real thing. In terms of self-care, how have you both found sort of able to set your boundaries between yourself and your activism and make sure you're taking care of you while you're also taking on these huge problems? 
Yeah, self-care is super important for me in terms of activism because I realized that back when I used to not prioritize self-care and I used to uh, never put myself first, I realized that I wasn't really being effective in my activism and leadership because I learned that the more you prioritize yourself and the more that you're nurturing your body and your yourself, you're more able to effectively nurture relationships. And that's how you can form big and strong sustainable communities, which are very important in leadership um, because that's what we need right now in the current state of our world, we need to build strong, inclusive communities um, that are sustainable and um, strong and empowered. And you can't empower other people unless you empower yourself and you love yourself and you're prioritizing self-care. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I think I heavily agree with you, Shreya. You stated it perfectly. And I think self-care is very important. And sometimes it can be very hard to like prioritize and just take care of ourselves, especially with activism. We want to change the world. And like also, I think for many women and just women of color too, we're often told to be strong and just take on the world, solve all the problems. But like it's okay to rest. Like it's okay to rest. And like please do rest. Please do take care of yourselves. Like I think just understanding like there's no shame that comes in rest or no shame that comes in asking for help. And like, that's something that I would want all of us to do and just take with us too. Yeah, completely. That's, yes, claps for that too, please. It's kind of like how people love to call young women fearless, but they don't like to give them a lot of power or respect. Uh, we're, we're gonna change that. Um, I think that one thing that happens a lot with young activists is there's this sense that young people are so impulsive, they make decisions you know, in an instant, they're not thinking things through, and obviously the incredible strategists in this room know that that's not true, that amazing organizing takes a lot of deliberation and planning. How do you guys think about sort of the reputation that young women have or a sense that you're being underestimated with what it really, balancing that with what it really takes to be an effective activist? Do you ever let that get to you? Well, I think some people confuse the term uh, reactivity with impulsivity. And I feel like people, whenever they see like powerful women doing initiatives, they think um, that they're just being like very impulsive and maybe leading themselves into consequences and stuff like that. But I feel like all of that comes out of a place of good intention, right? Like every, every initiative that we do comes out of passion. Um, but sometimes it is important to make sure that we are being responsible with our movements and making sure that we don't get ourselves into consequences or any unsafe environments. And so um, as Girl Up leaders, it, it's important to remain accountable and to make sure that um, as Girl Up, we're setting a good example of what a good leader should be like and what are some safe um, initiatives to hold and some fearless ways to um, like act on whatever we, it is that we're passionate about without being in, impulsive and making informed and thoughtful decisions. So I think as Girl Up, we are doing a good job of that and setting a good example um, to young girls all around the world. And I think we can definitely change that perception that people have on young women being impulsive and restless. I think as um, young women leaders, I think we're all constantly challenging that narrative because it does take a lot to show up and like show out and like show up for our communities, whether that's through protests, through activists, through like legislation, through advocating for different legislations. I think we're constantly challenging that narrative of us being um, Impulsive. Impulsive, yeah. because I think it takes a lot to be an activist. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of dedication, a lot of effort, and so, I think that's an amazing thing that we're doing. Absolutely. How do you feel like your own lived experiences and the backgrounds that you come from affect the activism that you are interested in? And what have you sort of learned about inclusivity from the activism that you do? I think being inclusive within activism is very, very important. As activists, we need to be intersectional activists and be sure that we are understanding the perspectives of everyone in the room so that we can be effective leaders and effectively make change in our world. I think a really great way that I've learned to do that is through storytelling and listening to other people's stories and really like understanding um, the perceptions of everyone. And I think that's really helped me because once I started listening to people's stories and really acting on them, I became, I've become a better leader and a better activist. And I think intersectionality is very, very important. Totally. I think for me, very quickly, I remember like earlier during like the spring semester taking a class called um, 
multicultural health. And so it focused on like public health and like different how different ethnic and um, minority communities across the globe and across the country handle health and healthcare practices. And so one thing I remember learning is like women of like women in general just aren't being treated properly when it comes to the healthcare fields. Like a lot of the facts, like a lot of the stuff that are put in the textbooks that I study are just not catered to the female body. A lot of it's dedicated to like the male body and even like when it comes to prescription medicine and like for example pregnancy and like delivery, a lot of it just is proven to be harmful to women and like the rates of like maternal morality are so high, which is one fact that we learned. And I just remember being so shocked about like how this is like how this information has not been addressed. And I think that has like pushed me and my peers in my activism. Like when we're talking to a lot of girls here that are like interested in STEM, and when we're talking about these facts in like the STEM fields and in healthcare, and like these are just something that I would want to change. And it's like for me personally, it's like even pushed me further to advocate and like be a better activist. Yeah, I think, I mean, information is power, right? We know that, but I think a lot of people don't have access to that kind of information, which is why it can feel like such a revelation to learn these things. Uh, the one thing I wanted to ask, sorry for the curveball, but you guys are so good at this, I know you'll be okay. Uh, since this session is about voices and platforms and seizing a microphone, which luckily we all have right now, I'm curious who encouraged you guys to use your voices or what was the first time that you felt like there was something powerful about being heard as a young woman? I think there's a lot of women in this world that have like inspired me to become an activist, um, but I think the one person that I could always think of is my mother. She really, she's like a very avid feminist and I think I learned a lot from her. Um, I remember when we used to watch like old movies like Cinderella and stuff like that, I used to like, um, I used to like like it a lot, but she would be like, no, like you should never like change yourself for a man. You should never like run after the man. Like I hate these Disney stories True. because like every single princess is always running after the man and like the man always saves her and I don't like that. And I was like, oh, and like that like really changed my perspective from a really young age. And I think that's what kind of evolved me into a feminist from a really young age. And I can always um, be thankful for her for that because that's who I am today now. Yes, let's hear it for moms. <laughs> I think for me, I remember I was a TA during 2021, and so our TA coordinator, her name is Rocio, and I'm gonna say Rocio because I remember entering as a TA, Rocio would always push me to talk and to say like, she would always tell me that, oh my, your opinions and like your thoughts always matter. I would always shy away from speaking. I was really, really shy, and sometimes I would be like, okay, I don't know if I can like add this or insert this or if I would be smart enough, and Rocio would just always tell me like to never think like that. And I remember she would even add during meetings like, oh, Michelle, do you like wanna add anything? And she was just like the first person that showed, like she really believed in me. And it went, really went a long way having that one person believed in me and tell me that like I was smart enough and stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna tear it up, but like shout out Rocio. <laughs> Yes, and to call back to what Brittany was saying in the last session, I think the amazing thing about being a young, active person is that we actually can all be that kind of person for somebody else. Every single person in this room can ask themselves in a room that they're in, is there someone else who has an opinion that's important that needs to be shared? Is there a way that I can speak myself and amplify someone else with me at the same time? That is how movements are built. That's how change happens. And really the power to do it is sitting here in this room. Um, and I really believe that. And now I can say with a few centuries of historical data that it is true. Uh, on that note, I just would love to ask both of you if there's anything that you feel like you wish you knew when you were just starting out that activists who are getting started now should know. Um, I would always say like there's always community. Like even though it might be hard to find your community, but your community is definitely out there. And I think that's one of the amazing things about Girl Up is that they have these events where we can find that community. And then also just to say that, like one small thing I would like to say is like, what you have to say matters and you should not be afraid to share what you have to say. And like, you're not gonna be shamed for that. Like your voice really does matter. What you have to say matters and you also matter too. Absolutely. 
Yeah, just echoing off of her, definitely um, telling my younger self that her voice does matter is would have changed her world back then because I remember I was super duper quiet whenever I was little and I would have a lot of opinions and my family is also pretty opinionated because of my mom and stuff. Um, but I would never really like... Um, talk out loud, but I wish that I did back then because I probably would have inspired other people at a younger age as well, so yeah. Okay, so that's your marching order. Speak up, be heard, and help other people be heard too. Thank you.